Hey guys, well, just uh, all kinds of things to talk about tonight, and uh, welcome to the Tarbis, of course, as always. Uh, first off, uh, where to begin? You know, I actually had to make a little list. It's just fell on the floor. Because I had so many things to talk about, I didn't want to leave anything out. So, where to begin? Okay, uh, I guess we'll do this in sort of a chronological order, which means starting with yesterday and getting right what I got wrong. Uh, I was incorrect. The Marine Corps did not fly the A7 Corsair II. Um, I used to sell models. That's how Max's models began. I sold uh, the desktop display models on the internet, and I had a bunch of different versions of the A7, and in my now faulty old man brain, I thought one of them was Marine markings. It was not. And I was kind of thinking, you'd think that's an airplane the Marines would like, because they do close air support. In fact, when I was in the Army, we used to talk about how the Marines would actually bring their uh, air support in closer than we did in the army uh, what we would call danger close but then i realized they trained together but then it made sense airplanes like the a4 skyhawk and later on the harrier which were smaller probably a little bit more maneuverable would be better for uh getting precise ordnance i think the a7 was more of a uh i guess by the standards of the day which you might call kind of a medium bomber you know uh it uh, didn't carry the the heavy ordnance of the uh a6 or have the all night mission, but it carried a lot more bombs than an A4 or a Harrier. So I guess for the infantry close air support mission, which is the Marine Corps, you know, uh, forte, not that, that airplane was probably just a little more airplane than they wanted. So I guess a Skyhawk makes more sense. I'm kind of, I'm guessing on this. So, uh, but I was, I was wrong. The A7 was not in the Marine Corps inventory. Uh, next thing, uh, I want to thank uh, Bob for the books. I uh, got some books today. Got the Lightning Boys. Stories uh, from the pilots of the English Electric Lightning, which should be interesting because that's a get there fast, go there now airplane. And uh, an autobiography of James Jimmy Doolittle. Um, I think I said uh, I could never be so lucky again. I actually have been meaning to read that book because my favorite movie star is Jimmy Stewart and my favorite aviation figure is Jimmy Doolittle. And uh, although nobody's perfect, those guys... Um, a couple of the uh in their respective fields of course both of them had strong ties to aviation i think they were two of the greatest and and uh i just uh, uh they're they're the people that on the and of course i'm sure we all have our favorite figure in racing and flying and movies uh in history and all that kind of stuff and uh those guys are definitely uh, at the top of my favorite in aviation and favorite in Hollywood. And uh, they, I believe they, they knew each other too. Um, and I completely agree with the title of this book, I Can Never Be So Lucky Again. Right guy, right time, right place, right skills, all that kind of thing. So uh, somebody asked if anybody made a kit of the, uh, the F-4H or the F-110, the, the early Phantom. Uh, Hasegawa... Uh, and I think it's a 2003, put a 172nd scale um, kit out. And, of course, Aurora made, uh, uh, and I think the Hasegawa kit was the Navy. Uh, no, anyway, uh, Aurora made the Navy version of the F4H. Anyway, uh, which segues into the next thing. Uh, some comments folks made about uh, the F4 not being, really being the F110. So, um, of course, I always do these things off the top of my head. But uh, at this time, I actually went back and said, okay, let's, let's get this straight because I knew I had it a bit jumbled. Um, as you guys know, the Phantom II was uh, made for the Navy. And uh, a little more research shows that it did, st it, it did start out as an upgraded demon and then a, a new super demon. But it took on a whole life of its own. But if you can see in these pictures, here you can sort of see the demon McDonald DNA uh, transferring into an early mock-up of the Phantom with the straight wings and the straight tail, which is, you know, they had to change. And by the way, just as a, I looked it up real quick, it was, uh, tw the wing tips went up 12 degrees, the tail went down 23 degrees. The wing tips, the outer third going up 12 degrees, gave the entire wing, uh, a, I believe it was a five degree, uh, average, uh, dihedral, which is, is what they needed for the performance they wanted. So, uh, just to correct those numbers. But, um, the, uh, uh, airplane was, uh, you, you can just see the, the, the DNA from, from the earlier McDonald products. And uh, of course the designs kept changing until it was an entirely new airplane. So the Phantom is not a upgraded demon, but that was kind of the jumping off point, but it became something entirely different. All the mid to profile, the, the Navy came out with entirely new specs. So it's a, it, but you can just sort of see how it, 
uh, uh, how there's a, a hint of the DNA in, in route. So, um, Estes, I uh, got to work on the um, uh, Mercury Redstone today, and uh, one of the things that happened was uh, when I painted it, I painted the entire capsule black, um, and I'd forgotten that you know it's got to go in the tube, and, and, and it sort of got a little sticky. So, uh, fortunately, here in the Tarbis, I have a, a little tin of Vaseline, which I had to find, and Boy, I tell you what, nothing's like trying to find something small when you don't know where it is, or do you realize how much crap you've collected? Uh, what, uh, when I was building RCs, one of the old tricks is you put a little Vaseline on the hinges and everything so that you don't get any paint or glue intrusion, and uh, of course cause them to stick or go out of balance. So uh, this was, the semi-gloss paint that I was using was sticking really bad. I couldn't even get it down in here. But... Uh, now with a hint of Vaseline on there, it slides in and out without too much trouble. I'll probably have to slide a little on for each launch just to make sure. Because I have, in my uh, glory days of flying model rockets, had times when the uh, uh, nose cone would not separate and actually it blew the entire engine mount out the tail and the thing came down like, like a real missile. Uh, which... If I'd had a video camera at the time or something where I could have, you know, caught it and recorded it and it could have lived on in glory, you know, in YouTube glory forever would have been okay. But unfortunately, it's just memory because, uh, you know, that was life in the 70s. Um, the little Sanwa, on, on, and not for something totally different, the little uh, Sanwa models that uh, the Sanwa guy gave me, I kind of more or less finished those up today. Still got a little bit of work to do on them. But... The Hurricane, I was able to make the decals work, but the Messerschmitt, these decals have been in the water for over two hours. I've tried using setting solution and everything else. They wouldn't come off, so I had to use some aftermarket German decals. It's just one of those things. Same company, probably roughly the same vintage. One set survived and worked, the other one didn't. Just one of those things. Uh, and now, on to our sponsor, Dodge. The Ram Charger. Okay, I went ahead and did it. I wired up the uh, spark plugs and into the distributor cap. Now, this book that I was given recently by one of you magnificent glue troopers was a little bit of my guiding star on that. And it shows in here how to drill out the head and it's doing it on a Hemi. And um, some of you guys are saying, be careful which way you send the wires uh, because some of the Hemi guys will go, that's the wrong firing order. And that's, if you've ever seen Zootopia, uh, Idris Elba's character, Captain Bogo, uh, the big water buck has the best line in the movie. When somebody goes, well, you've got those wired up in the wrong firing order, I do my best, Captain Bogo. <clears throat> don't care. I don't care. Anyway, um, oh, one thing this book said that became a deal was, it was some of you guys had sent me links to how to find companies that pre-make uh, distributors with the wires already on them for uh, model cars, and at some point in the future, I might very well do that. But I, um, uh, the book pointed out, and I agreed, I was like, I tried putting a wire, uh, first off, I tried using metal wire, that just didn't work. So then I wound up using thread. And I tried putting one thread on one distributor at a time, and it, they just wouldn't adhere. There was just wasn't enough surface contact area there, and I talked about where you can drill them out. Well, I don't have a pen vise small enough for that, because if you look at these pictures, you see how small that thing is compared to my figure, by my finger, my figure, <laughs> my figure. Um, but, uh, but, uh, that's, it's just too small for these eyes, these thumbs to deal with. So, but it said, what you can do is you can drill out the center and just bundle the wires and put them all through and come out on a smaller scale. It'll look fine. So, uh, what I did instead of that was a white glue wound up being the best thing to use for me. So uh, I put white glue, bundled them because the, the regular glue wasn't holding the thread very well. So I, I, I used a dab of white glue, bundle them in the center have them all going out, put them through the drill holes, then use little dollops of glue to make those black spark plug, plug covers that several of you warned me about, so I've got those. Um, and given the detail level that, that I'm looking for, for me, this is fine. I'm very happy with the way it looks. Um, and uh, it took me a while. It took quite a bit of trial and error. Most of the day went to this because this is the first time I've tried to wire one up like this since I was probably 14. Um, and uh, it, it's and of course, obviously, until I dropped it in the car, and I went ahead and painted the body and everything, and uh, getting ahead on that. So, 
Um, oh, side note, uh, was in and out of the dentist an hour today. They didn't even use Novocaine. They just stuck the thing right on. They wanted me to be able to feel it. So that was one reason I was able to get here and be productive today. Um, but uh, so the car, the player, the Ram Charger is moving along. And uh, I'm uh, I have a good time with it. I, you know, doing something new. Uh, um, I really like the way that the orange hemi and the black. It just, it's just cool. I'm glad I dropped the engine in there. Um, I almost put one on the coil, but I was like, eh, I'm pushing my luck. I'm, I broke this thing four times trying to get parts on it, and you're trying to and you knock something off. Oh, which brings me to my next story. I, and I'm sure this has happened to all of us, I'm working on the little Sanwa uh, Hurricane, or Meshers, anyway, they're both sitting in front of me. And I stand up and reach over, and I had my fleece on, because uh, it was a little, a little cool out here today. And, uh... Like, I really need to tell you I had my fleece on because it was cool. Of course, if I'm wearing my fleece, it's cool. Oh, me and my extraneous details. Anyway, I stand up, and when I do, it's not zipped, and the bottom of the fleece goes over the table as I reach over and just bowls everything over, breaks one of the models, had to fix it. Had to just... <sighs> we do so much damage just moving. Don't move. Just... It's in place. Freeze. I'm just going to sit perfectly still for two hours till everything hardens. And oops, I'm just going to drop the paper again. Ah, oh. So, uh, the Hemi in the book and the SDs. Ah, the A4s. Ha 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 ha. Almost forgot. I didn't even have that on here. I just remembered that. Um, or the F4s, I mean. A couple of you guys added some F4s that I missed. We've got the uh, F4B, which was the old biplane. And my brother, I had one of these kits as a kid because somewhere I've got an old Polaroid of, of the one we, we built or he built. I don't know if I built it or my brother did. I think he built it. Anyway, point is there's the F4B biplane. Then of course the F4, F Wildcat, the F4E Corsair. And you'll notice this picture. I used the prototype which had the early I had the cockpit way up forward. If you want to know all the stuff about the Corsair, why it has all these oddball shapes, uh, Greg's airplanes, he did a great great video on it goes in all the detail uh, of course they moved the cockpit pad put the fuel tank up front for a lot of reasons weight and balance and a lot of other stuff but anyway so there's uh the f4b the f4f the f4u corsair uh the uh f4d sky ray i forgot and of course the f4 phantom and there was a british airplane the f4 uh which uh was just throw another one on for good measure so, uh, and I'm probably still missing something, but that's, there's my three minute search on the internet. And, uh, so, uh, F4 has got to be the most common designation for military aircraft. So, uh, I talked about the SDs. I talked about the car. I talked about, uh, this, uh, disaster with my fleece. I talked about, uh, fixed, correcting my boo-boo from yesterday with the, um, a7. I, th I think I covered all. So there was one other thing. Uh, a while back, one of the viewers sent me uh, this uh, um, uh, vacuform kit, and like I've, I've only done a couple of vacuform kits, and I've always found it very tricky to work with. And it came with these white inserts, and I'm but no instructions. And I'm thinking these white inserts are probably to put in the middle like that, so you have something to bond it to, and. Uh, um, or maybe they expect you to make it something else that's just supposed to go on like that. But anyway, I started working with this today and, woo, vacuum kits are tricky. So, uh, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Uh, somebody did email me that they heard that Ravel will be putting out a model of the Razor Quest from the Mandal Mandalorian. So, uh, all you sci-fi guys and myself will have to keep our eye out for that. Um, I think it's Hasbro is supposed to be putting out a, a, a real big one, like $350. It's already made, super detailed. Um, it's kind of a combination model and toy, but or whatever you want to call that. So, uh, well, at least I got a little bit of work done today. I'm feeling pretty good, but it's about time to wrap up, go start working on this video. And it's approaching the dining hour, which is uh, when uh, Evil Max comes from below and goes, Feed me! So guys, uh, have a wonderful evening. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having a, a, a great evening and uh, we'll uh, see you later. Model on.